Right, so uh, Hammer Films were a British studio. They made a lot of different films, but mainly they were famous for making horror movies. They really made some classic horror tales, but in colour. So for the first time, you could see these. Uh, you could see the castles, the costumes, and more importantly, the blood in glorious Technicolor. And I watched these films on my little portable TV set when I was a kid. It was a black and white TV set, so the, uh, the effect was largely lost. Um, but there were scary films. A lot of people thought they were cheesy, which I didn't understand at all. They were kind of gothic. They were a little bit cheesy, fair enough. But, uh, <laughs> but they were also scary. I watched them. I was too young to be watching them. I used to, I used to watch them in the dark, and I, I would, I would, if my parents came up the stairs, I'd turn the TV off because I wasn't meant to be watching them. And, and boobies as well. Boobies. Um, it was the sexual revolution of the 60s and 70s, and Hammer made full use of the more... Uh, more sort of liberal uses of nudity and, and sex on the screen. Now, there was also, when I was young, the Video Nasty Scare. Now, these were films which were portrayed as being different to the Hammer movies that I liked watching. They were films that were so depraved and corrupt they could actually damage you if you watched them. So, it kind of um, it pervaded the media and politics and Parliament. You would occasionally meet someone at school who would claim to have seen one of the films but it, it, upon questioning, they, they hadn't seen the film. It was kind of, they had mythical status. And uh, they, they, the press picked up on that, like, horrible crimes got blamed on the video nasties and also uh, on a genuine Victorian stamp collection for 9 99 bargain. Um, so, uh, but also, it was a time of recession. There was three million unemployed. There was the miners' strikes. and. The video nasties were kind of, uh, they were a scapegoat for the bad things that were happening in the country. And it, in my lifetime I've lived through three recessions. And in the early 90s there was another recession while there was another a kind of counterculture craze going on <coughs> of warehouse raves and dance music. And it was a largely peaceful cultural movement. They didn't even drink very much for, for some reason. Um, <laughs> and, but it was picked up by the press and the criminal justice bill was passed effectively making uh, warehouse raves illegal. And now we've got uh, another recession in which uh, we've got Nigel Farage who's trying to convince us all that um, immigration represents some sort of threat to the fabric of our society, when in actual fact um, they're actually bankrolled by, by bankers, so that he's been put there. I, he doesn't even care when people call him a twat because he knows it's bullshit that he's talking. Now, um, yeah, that's the bankers who the, the, I would think that the most horrendous event for somebody from the Daily Mail would be uh, a video, a Romanian video nasty rave. Um, <laughs> next Friday night in the basement bar. Um, <laughs> so, I, I saw these films eventually. You, you get older and you can get imported DVDs and download things. And I realised I'd been lied to because these films are a load of shit. That's, I, they're not depraved and corrupt at all. That's from Axe. It's actually from Anthropophagus the Beast, so uh, someone's not such a smart ass all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> the, a lot of these films, they they kind of got a horrible idea and a really great title. That's a Cenobite, he's, he's Pinhead, so a lot of these kind of, that's a, yeah, they're, they're both Cenobites. They're kind of like dark clowns, they're, they're, they're characters that exist on, uh, on uh, the edges of, uh, of, of reality and they can be brought into our world through solving a puzzle. Now, it's kind of... Like comedy and horror, it's often, it exists on the cusp of being absurd and, and being inspired. That's a CD Cenobite that would throw CDs at people. So, kind of like, he was pretty cool in the 90s, now vinyl guys kind of surpassed him, he was <laughs> obsolete. So I thought, could I create my own Cenobite? That's um, Windows 98 head. Um, he's kind of got a very heavy monitor for a head keeps crashing, he just hangs about with CD guy and feels generally obsolete. Um, that is a uh, basketball hoop head. Uh, he has a basketball hoop for a head. If you score a hoop through his head, then he claims your soul. But obviously, <laughs> it's not very convenient for him to be crawling around on the floor, so he spends most of his time on the top of cupboards and shelves, where it's more tempting to score. And you know that he claims his soul if you score a a basket <laughs> through his... But it's just tempting, isn't it? I mean, look, it's tempting. <laughs> and, um, I put this together on Sunday night. I had one slide left, and I was going to think of some justifiable reason for including another Buxom Hammer Girl, but I've, uh, I've, I've not thought of one, so that's about it. <laughs> <laughs>